All right, let's continue with type 3 hypersensitivity. In the previous videos, we spoke about type 2 and type 1. In uh, type 1, the antigen was circulating while the antibody was fixed on mast cells or basophils, while in type 2, the roles were opposite in which the antibody was in the circulation while the antigens were fixed on the cells. So now in type 3, usually both of them are in circulation, but in some cases, the antigen can be planted then followed by antibody binding to it. In type 3 hypersensitivity, we call the antibody antigen uh, complex an immune complex. Another difference between type 1, 2 and 3 is the duration. The duration of type 3 can be from hours to days, more specifically 3 to 8 hours. And the origin of the antigen can be exogenous or endogenous. By exogenous, we mean uh, something such as a foreign bacteria or viruses or fungi and so on. While endogenous can be your own cell components. And uh, you will see examples of these in some of the diseases we'll talk about. Also, by this immune complex formation, there will be an activation of the complement system and also an induction of your immune cells such as neutrophils and macrophages. The, the position of the immune complex will depend on the size of uh, the immune complex, essentially the size of the antigen, and its solubility, but also how fast can your mononuclear system, your macrophages essentially, and other cells, can get rid of this. The rule of thumb is the smaller they are, the harder it is for the mononuclear system to get rid of them. The white blood cell recruitment will be essentially by the chemotaxis, such as uh, complement C5A. As you remember, it worked as a chemotactic agent. But if it's exogenous, origin of the antigen, it can also be by bacterial antigens. And also the complement system will release its C5 3A, 4A, and 5A, also known as anaphylatoxins, which will uh, cause an induction of the inflammation, causing further recruitment of white blood cells. So, the general classification is that one group is generalized and the other group is localized. Most of the discussion will be about generalized. So, in serum sickness, this is a condition in which, let's assume a, uh, a person has some autoimmunity but, and their immune cannot get rid of this autoantibodies or uh, autoimmune cells. Then we can try to extract this autoimmune cells or antibodies and give it to an animal such as a horse or a rabbit in which the animal will now produce its own antibodies against this and then we will extract uh, this new antibody called ATG, anti-thymoglobulin, which we will reinsert back to this person. And this ATG will now attack the previous uh, autoimmunity uh, problem. But there, is, uh, but there is a consequence of this. As this ATG is formed, your own body will soon form its own antibody, so anti-ATG. And uh, these Numerous amount of anti-ATGs together with the ATG forming the immune complex will deposit throughout your system, uh, mainly on your joints, uh, on your pleura, on your heart, in, in your heart, in your lymph nodes, in your skin, and cause different uh, problems. But eventually, your mononuclear system will be able to get rid of it but you will suffer a while, so to speak. And essentially, the so in other words, the antibody that will be formed in serum sickness will be anti-ATG. Then we have SLE. Uh, in this video, we'll not talk so much about SLE because this will be covered in the autoimmune disease sections. And same goes with rheumatoid arthritis. In Kuzbal's disease, also known as uh, polyarthritis nodosa, we will have hepatitis uh, B surface antigen and the antibody against it is formed, while in post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, there are the bacteria that works as the antigens and antibodies are formed against them. In reactive arthritis, we can have bacteria such as Yersinia, Chlamydia, Trachomatis, 
and salmonella and usually in type 3 hypersensitivity we see a characteristic fibrinoid necrosis this is due to the deposition of immune complexes in many of your vessels causing an excessive inflammation and excessive destruction of the layers of your vessels leading to thrombi formation and coagulations that causes an obstruction of blood flow to the specific tissue leading to the different leading to the different symptoms and finally we have the localized form which includes farmer's lung this is due to the bacteria thermophilic actinomycitis which can be a, a product of agricultural uh, it can be product of hay dust, the mold or plants and if it's not fixed on time this may lead to delayed type of uh, hypersensitivity essentially granulomatous interstitial pneumitis thank you